at a faster pace compared to the normal post. Facts. Again, if you want to communicate from one state to another, which is which should be in the its basic form, then fax can be done. Telephone calls. Somebody is very far from me, and I want to transfer the message as soon as possible. Then telephone call would be the best channel in that case. Electronic mails. Again, something which you want to communicate as fast as possible. Something can be urgent. Something can be highly important. Something which you want to preserve as a part of your proof. That is nothing but a channel. Output the information received by the receiver. Decoding. As we have discussed earlier, decoding. It is in order to interpret or understand the information. The receiver deciphers, breaks the encoded information sent by the sender. And last but not the least, feedback. would be receiver's response let's move on to the next slide major difficulties it is very important to understand that process of communication can be affected by different difficulties or barriers right now we cannot discuss all the barriers because it's altogether a different topic but i would like you to go through few barriers which are very very important when we talk about difference in perception when we talk about the communication barriers or the difficulties in communication process difference in perception and language it is very important to understand that our perception would not be the same as per the receiver's perception perception is something what you see and what you understand according to your own understanding so it is highly possible that my perception is different from yours and yours perception is different from mine and from some others perception as well so perception becomes a barrier becomes a major difficulty in the process of communication because if i want to make you understand something which is very important but your perception is negative about it you might not be able to take the message in the same form which i want to communicate to you the next barrier would like to talk about would be the cultural sensitivity that is very difficult for people to understand that we should be sensitive regarding other person's culture and language which is a part of it try to construct a message try to encode a message in a way that it is easily understood by the person from the other side for example i am a teacher of communication i am a professor of communication i sends out the message in english to the students who cannot understand english do you think my communication is possible do you think my communication has been done no i have to choose a language which can be understood by the other person if i prefer to communicate in french but the other person cannot understand the french then there and there my objective of communication would fail so in order to communicate in the most effective manner we have to understand these major difficulties and try to choose the language which receiver can easily understand try to be sensitive according to the receiver's culture so that nothing gets offended to him try to be more sure when you talk about the communication when you talk about the process of communication and try to remove as many difficulties as possible we like to talk about the next point that is poor listening i hope you understand the difference between the hearing and listening which i have already discussed i'll let you know again because it is very very important when we talk about communication listening is something which we hear with our proper attention when we pay heed what is been said to us listening is an important part of communication listening at the receiver's end should be very correct for example as a teacher i am teaching something but the student is not paying attention to it now please understand the difference between hearing and listening i am teaching a new concept in communication but student might be sitting at the last bench busy doing homework or some other subject it means he is able to hear what i am saying but because his attention is towards the homework that he is doing right now 
he won't be able to understand what i'm teaching that means hearing is hearing is taking place but listening is not taking place so if your audience is not listening to you then it is a major difficulty it is a major barrier in the communication emotional interference when you are emotionally affected you cannot take the message or you cannot receive the message the way it was sent the message gets distorted due to the emotional interference last but not the least physical distractions cultural differences and physical distractions cultural differences is the difference that you find in every other state in every other country so if there are cultural differences you have to understand the communication very effectively i would like to show few examples of cultural differences for example in western culture if you want to say one it goes like this two like this three like this four like this and five like this but in indian culture we say one like this two like this three like this four and five in other cultures this might mean zero but in indian culture it is pure for sure it is perfect it is correct it is excellent so what this symbol means in my culture might not be the same in your culture what this means in my culture might not be the same in your culture so there are lots of signs there are lots of symbols which are different in different cultures should be taken into consideration and should be worked upon so whenever you are talking or whenever you are giving some message ensure that you are aware culturally about that specific country or state i'll move on with the next slide that is major difficulties in con communication now these difficulties usually occur in the process of communication that is no perceived benefit to the audience when audience thinks that they are not getting the benefit they would stop listening noise which is of outside disturbance variations in listening skills cultural differences which we have already discussed complexity of subject matter time constraint real or perceived personal biases or hostility difficult questions and sensitive issues types of feedback now it is very important to understand that we have seen the communication process is complete when we talk about feedback so let's see how many kinds of feedbacks are there first is confirmatory response second is corrective or affirmative response third is explanatory response fourth is diagnostic response and last but not the least elaborative response confirmatory response simplest and perhaps most widely used recipient simply acknowledges it means confirmatory response comes from the word confirmation for example somebody says are you going to come tomorrow are you and i'll say yes i am going to come that means i am confirming so my feedback would be or my response would be termed as confirmatory response don't you think that person was good i would say yes of course he was good that means i'm confirming what he is saying in confirmatory response the recipient or the receiver of the information simply acknowledges it is popularly known or the responses can be given by nodding that is by your gestures saying yes saying no by hand shaking head shaking that is moving your head by thumbs up or thumbs down here an example is given for example a statement is there author is good and if you want to give a confirmatory response what you will say okay if you say so he is good that means you are saying yes to what he is saying you are acknowledging what he is saying you are confirming what he is saying let's move on to the next part of response that is corrective response also known as affirmative response now what is meant by corrective or affirmative it is very important for you to understand what do we mean by affirmative an affirmative is someone who believes in himself who has more belief who knows who is convinced by himself or herself what is right or wrong and it sticks to it so it doesn't matter what is the response of somebody else if you are affirmative about what you believe if you are affirmative what you think 
you are going to respond on the basis of what you think. So the affirmative response is a corrective feedback either provides correction to the statement or agrees with it more informative than the previous one. Yes, in confirmative, that is the previous one, you simply say yes or no. That means you are confirming with the statement. But in the corrective response or the affirmative response, it is not necessary that you say yes according to the sender. You might correct him. For example, the sender says that this book is good and I am the receiver but I am affirmative. I will say I have read this book and I don't think it is worthy enough. So I might not agree with him. Why? Because I am affirmative. I know what is it all about. I do not want to offend somebody else but at the same time I cannot accept which is against my belief which is against my notions. So let's move on to the next part. I'll read the example given over here. The author is good. So in the case of corrective or affirmative response, no he is not. He is really really good. Third is explanatory response. What is explanatory response? It offers more information. Apart from confirming and affirming the statement, the person provides reason to his or her opinion or view. So explanatory word comes from the word explanation. That means you not only give the, uh, uh, you know, confirm or you don't confirm, but it is more important for you to explain the feedback. For example, the statement given over here is the author is good. And the response goes like this. Yes, he is. Look at those lines. So you can go in depth when you are giving an explanatory response. For example, somebody says that X, Y, Z author is good. What you will say? Yes, that author is good. I have read his few of the novels before also. His novels were very good. The kind of language which he uses is absolutely flawless. The kind of language he uses is impeccable. I like the language he uses. It is very simple and lucid to understand. So what do you do? You are actually explaining. So your response or feedback comes in the form of explanation which is called as explanatory response. Next is diagnostic response. Sometimes it is insufficient to give one's opinion explanation. Now please understand what do we mean by the diagnostic response? Diagnostic response is something which is referred as analysis of the information. You get into the depth of the response, into the statement, you analyze it, you get into every detail and you talk about it. For example, if I say, again the same statement, that author was good and you now do the analysis. I know that author, that author is good, but I don't think that his latest book is good enough. I have read his last two books which were based on fiction, but this time, the book that he has written is not good as far as the content is concerned. He could have worked better. If I talk about his first novel, that was better than an, any other novel. But in the subsequent novels, the quality has deteriorated. So for example, if I'm explaining this thing, that is nothing, but I'm doing a deep analysis of it. I'm dividing, I'm understanding, I'm, I'm keeping a separate bracket for each and every explanation that I'm giving to it. So diagnostic response is something which we usually see when people analyze the entire content. The example given over here is the author is good. Response, yes is content is fresh and innovative. So what is fresh and innovative? It is the analysis of the author's writing. Next is elaborative response. It is important to many businesses as it offers additional information apart from what is presented. Includes reference to personal experiences, studies or researches and other information that can enlighten the discussion. For example, statement says the author is good. Response, perhaps, but good is a subjective term. So elaborative response again includes a lot of explanation and doesn't mean that whatever the statement is should always be correct. It talks about the subjective feeling. So the feedback or the response which goes is very subjective in nature. For example, XYZ author is liked by you, but might not be liked by me. Why? Because I like a different genre of writing, a different style of writing. So I'm very subjective about it. My choice, my preference, my taste is very different 
and therefore that kind of understanding that kind of message can be termed or that kind of feedback can be termed as elaborative response i'll move on with the next part this is an important part communication and electronic media email voicemail phone conferencing video conferencing telephone and cell phone it is very important to understand from the communication point of view from the process point of view when i send an email i construct a message in my mind i encode it i am the sender i type the email that is in the verbal form of communication i send it to the receiver receiver receives it decodes the information and sends me back as a form of reply so when he sends me as a form of reply then he becomes the sender and i become the receiver so it is the two way communication process in voicemail it is a one way communication process so we'll understand right now what is the one way communication process is all about in voicemail the person is not available on the phone and leave, you leave your name number and message phone conferencing is when when you are communicating with more than one person video conferencing is again the same as phone conferencing but in video you can actually view the person you can see the person or in the conference telephone when you make urgent phone calls and again it's a two way communication process you become the sender the other person becomes the receiver when the other person becomes the receiver you become the sender and last but not the least cell phone is again the same when we talk about the telephone we'll move on to the next part that is the importance of communication in management importance communication skills are indispensable for effective management it it is through communication that the production and distribution operations are controlled and coordinated to achieve the objectives so we can see that the functions of management are there and functions of management get highly affected by the communication process whenever you want to forecast anything organize instruct coordinate control everywhere communication is required importance of communication continued it creates a sense of belonging resolves disputes provides a holistic view so process of communication is smooth then it definitely gives you these uh, ideas these 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 are the benefits or importance of it communication concerns of the manager receives and interpret the information sends information distribute the information develops a positive attitude transmits information to subordinates but this is only possible when the manager communicates in the effective manner and completes the process of communication effectively so on the interpersonal role informational role and decisional role a manager whenever he communicates whenever he participates in the process of communication either he is doing interpersonal communication that is between two or